All right, everybody, welcome back. We are talking about friction. Pretty exciting. I think students are always excited to learn about friction since we've been ignoring it for so long. Okay, the reason objects are often slow to a stop, the reason it is difficult to get object to initially move. All right, so let's talk about this. So friction is a force that tries to prevent two surfaces from sliding relative to one another. Static friction, the force that prevents the motion of a stationary object. Kinetic friction, the force that acts opposite to the motion of a moving object. Okay, so static friction, what does that mean? The force that prevents the motion of a stationary object. So like you might think of something like a large cabinet or something like that. You're There's this large cabinet and you're this little person trying to push on this cabinet. And even though you push, 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 push on it, it doesn't move. And that is because of static friction. Okay, so that's how static friction is. When something is essentially not moving, even though a force is trying to get it to move, static friction is acting on it. However, let's say you have this large cabinet again, but you are pushing on it and it is moving. You got it uh, moving. So even though it is moving, there is, you're pushing it, force applied, but there is a force of friction kinetic on it. So in this case, you're pushing it, force applied, but it's not moving and there's a force of friction static on it. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. So which do you believe is stronger? And the answer is, oops, the answer is static friction. Static friction is stronger because static friction, it's harder to get something to move than if something's already moving, it's easier to keep it moving. Okay, moving on. All right, let's look at this. What are frictional forces dependent on? In both static and kinetic friction, the more contact an object has, the harder it is to move. Move. So we know that friction is dependent on one, the normal force, which is the same thing as like contact force. Um, number two, also the type of material that the object and the surfaces are made of will affect friction. This is represented by the coefficient of friction mu. The coefficient of friction is usually between zero and one and also doesn't have any units. Uh, it, one thing is it does not depend on surface area. So normal force, what does that mean? So let's say we have like a block here. The more it is pressed up against the ground or the floor or the table or whatever it is, the more it's pressed up against it, the harder it is gonna to need to move. And you can even see that with your hands. If you rub your hands together, it slides a certain amount, but if you press, and then rub your hands together, it's a lot harder because there's a lot more friction because there's a lot more contact. Number two, also the type of material that the object and the surfaces are made of will affect friction. So this is by this mu here, and that should make sense. The more rough two surfaces are, the more they're gonna grind, the more friction there is. The smoother the surfaces are, the less friction there's gonna be. Um, you can also use an example of your hands, rubbing them together, then putting soap on them, uh, making them more slippery and there's not as much. So coefficient of friction, which we will talk more about and you'll see more of and normal force. That's pretty much it. Okay, moving on. So general idea of coefficient of friction of different objects, not something you need to memorize. So mu coefficient of friction doesn't have any units, but it's used almost always under one. So wood on bricks, when these two are rubbing against each other, the static friction is about 0.6 and the kinetic friction is about 0.45. Anyway, you could pause and look at it, but um, if you look at copper on steel, static friction is 0.53, kinetic friction is 0.36. And something that should be obvious is the static friction, the, the coefficient of static friction is almost always more than the kinetic friction. Okay, so let's learn more about kinetic and static friction. Kinetic friction. Friction forces are always parallel to the surface, a surface exerting them. So should make sense. If it's moving to the right, that means friction is going to be to the left. Okay. If it's getting pushed to the right, the force of friction is going to be pushed, uh, is going to be to the left. Okay. Connection, uh, kinetic friction is always directed opposite to the direction of motion. Okay, so trying to prevent motion is trying to slow down, resist motion, and so on, uh, kinetic friction. Static friction is less than or equal to a maximum possible value and is opposite of an applied force. Static friction seeks to keep an object at rest. So this is kind of an interesting point, this first point. So let's say I push on this block with one newton of force, okay? 
and it doesn't move. That means the force of friction static is also going to be equal to one newton. But then let's say I push this into with two newtons of force. That means the force of friction static is equal to two newtons. So it's going to kind of match whatever it's trying, whatever it's trying to get it to move. But there's going to be a maximum amount. So let's say for this example, the maximum amount is like 4.3. So it'll match up until 4.3. However, after a certain point, it's going to move. So let's say I push this with 5 newtons. Now it won't match that. Now it will become kinetic friction. And maybe that kinetic friction will be 3.6 or something like that. So it'll match it until its maximum possible value. Okay, and then that static friction will change into kinetic friction once it starts moving. All right, uh, this is a good example of it. Hopefully you watch it. Uh, here we go. Conceptual example number 11. A sled is being pulled across the a rough floor as shown in the picture. Draw a free body diagram of the sled. If the sled is accelerating, uh, which direction will it be accelerating? Okay, so let's kind of draw this. Uh, across a rough surface. Okay, so A. It's a box. So always, I love starting with force of gravity, as you guys should know by now, because, you know. And then there's a normal force. It's going up. It's not going to be as much up, because we can see that this sled is being pulled. Uh, and then it's going to be pulled this way, force applied. And then friction is going to be trying to prevent its motion. So fr force of friction is going to be this way. And yeah, pretty good. If the sled is accelerating, which direction will it be accelerating? We should know that it's going to be accelerating going to the right, okay? Gravity is going to be pulling it down, but the force applied in the x direction will be having it go to the right. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, next example. Someone is trying to slide a book across the table, but the book is not moving. What type of friction is preventing the book from moving? Okay. So it's not moving, should be the keyword right there. And that's going to be static friction. Okay. Uh, a hockey puck is sliding across the ice. As the hockey puck travels across the ice, it slows down. What type of friction is acting on the hockey puck while it's slowing down? So that's going to be, uh, the key thing over here is it's, it's, slow, it's slowing down and it's sliding. So that's, this means it's moving. If it's moving, that means we have kinetic friction. A heavy box is on the ground. In order for the box to start moving, it needs to be pushed with at least 20 newtons of force in the horizontal direction. Tonkin pushes the box to the right with a force of 12 newton and it does not move. While Tonkin is pushing, what is the force of static friction acting on the box? Okay, a little bit complicated, but Tonkin here is pushing with the force of 12 newtons and it's not moving so what we should know is the force of static friction force of friction static should also equal 12 newtons okay and why shouldn't it be 20 well if it was 20 let's say we have this as 20 that means that this and looking at the free body diagram that means this box should be accelerating to the left and we know that's not going to happen friction is not going to be accelerating something or I should say speeding something up. So what we should know is the force of friction static, like we mentioned earlier, matches until the maximum. So in this case, it didn't reach its maximum, so it's just gonna be 12 newtons to the left. Hope that makes sense. All right, a uh, heavy box on the ground, in order for the box to start moving, it needs to be pushed with at least 20 newtons of force in the horizontal direction. Billy pushes the box uh, left with the force of 15 newton and it does not move while Billy is pushing was a, a static for, uh, friction act down. So I kind of explained this in the last example. So watch that if you didn't already, but it should be 15 newtons to the right. Okay. A man is dragging a crate to the right as shown in the picture. Which way is the force of friction go uh, going to be pointed? In the direction the man is pulling, in the opposite direction the man is pulling, to the right, to the left, uh, none of the above. Okay, so it's going to be to the left. And the reason why it's not going to be uh, in the opposite direction, so in this in this case, the opposite direction would look something like this. However, remember, friction is always going in the opposite direction of its motion. So if it's uh, moving to the right like this, oops, sorry, not the best drawing, to the right, that means friction is going to be going to the left. Okay, hope that makes sense. 
a box is being pushed to the right with a constant velocity. Since the velocity of the box is constant, what force can we assume is acting on the box? Net force to the right, force to the tension, static friction, kinetic friction. Okay, uh, so it's moving. So we should know here that it is kinetic friction. And why, maybe you might be thinking, well, how can we assume that there is friction on it? Well, we know that this guy is pushing on it. So there's a force applied on it. But if there was no friction, that means it should be accelerating to the right. But we know actually there is no acceleration. Acceleration is equal to zero. So that means even if, if there's a force applied to it, there needs to be something canceling it out. And in this case, the force of friction kinetic. Okay. All right. Um, so that's it for now. We have more uh, problems with friction, but that's going to be more mathematical. So we'll save that for part two. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.